series starring McDonald Carey. Just calm down, Julie. Maybe we can get you home, too. You think I took that stole, don't you, Uncle Mickey? Look, Julie, nobody's condemning you. We want to help. They let Carol and Diane go home just like that, but not me. Why? We're trying to locate your parents. Once we do... I don't care about them, Grandpa. That's why I called you. I don't see why you keep trying to call them on the phone. They're never there. I told you that. I tried to tell him that, too, but he doesn't believe anything I say. That's the way it's been ever since we picked her up. Let me see that report again, will you, Mike? Julie, the detective just trying to do his gut job. He claims that he saw you take that fur piece. Your friends back him up. And so does the clerk. Julie, when you were very young, maybe uh, four, maybe five years old, we went to Meadow Lake Park once, just you and me. You got lost. You remember? You ran around that park screaming for your grandpa. So all you could do was scream. <laughs> you couldn't remember your name, your grandpa's name, or anything else. All you could do was yell and cry and kick up the dirt. Do you remember why? I guess I was scared. Uh huh. You know you've been doing that ever since, Julie? Was getting lost? No. No, being frightened and running off in ten directions at once. That's what you did then, that's what you're doing now, Julie. I'm not frightened, I'm mad. Everybody's trying to blame me for this. Mom and Dad will too, you'll see. All right, all right. Just for the sake of the argument, let's say that you're not frightened, you're mad, okay? Now, the point that I'm trying to make is that you're spreading your anger around in ten directions at once. You're fighting the whole world, even those that love you. Julie, all we're trying to do is help you. Don't you understand that? Oh, wait till you hear from my mother and father. You'll see. You'll see. They'll list all the trouble I've been. They'll even make up a few things to make themselves sound good. Well, there has been trouble before, hasn't there? Do you expect your mother and father to tell the police that you're a model young lady? That you couldn't possibly be the ringleader because you're a follower? That there's never been any trouble before? Not a bit of it? No. No, Julie, that's not so. We've got a problem that has to be solved by all of us together. But you must let Mickey and me help solve it. And your mother and father, too. But nothing's going to be solved unless you... Stay cool. Isn't that the word for it? <laughs> That's right, Julie. Don't blow your cool. Oh, come on now. In my circle, I'm considered very far from square. I think I'll uh, try and reach Ben and Addie. They should be home by now. And if they're not? Well, then perhaps we can try and make other arrangements. Thanks, Grandpa. Dr. Horton again. Have you heard from Mr. and Mrs. Olson yet? Oh, uh, just a moment. They won't be home for quite a while, considering the time now. Mike, how about it? We'll take Julie with us, and then as soon as her parents can be located, why, she'll be returned to their custody. Well, I'll, I'll check with the captain. I think Dr. Horton's reliable. Good. Miss Chamberlain, when my daughter gets there, have her call me home. Yes, thank you very much. No, there's no need to worry. Julie's with me. Yes. Well, feeling better, Julie? Just like Grandpa said. There's no need to worry. I'm with him. Well, that's just for right now. I think you better understand that. I believe it'll be all right. The captain would like to see you. Me? Yes. Now what? Well, now your grandfather will vouch for the fact that you'll be delivered to your parents and you'll be released. Delivered? Just like a package from the store, all tied up in a ribbon. And then they'll unpack you me You feel in. pretty sorry for yourself, don't you? Oh, come on, Uncle Mickey. I know darn well what you think of my father. Well, nevertheless, he is your father. 
Now, instead of feeling so sorry for yourself, maybe you'd better start thinking about how your actions affect your mother and father, and us, too. Oh, I know. I'm such an inconvenience. Young lady, you had better start thinking about the consequences of this action and all the other actions. I was never arrested before. Oh, you mean that you were never caught before. They have a record on you here, Julie. You were uh, suspected of previous shoplifting excursions. The juvenile officers have questioned you on one, two, three, three previous occasions. That's right, three previous occasions. Once at school when a locker caught on fire, once at a party. I wasn't responsible for those things and they know it. Insufficient evidence to draw an official petition against a minor. That's what it says here. But, Julie, now they have the evidence that you had better know it's going to be a tough road ahead. What do you mean? The police will petition to have you made a war... Oh. It means either 24-hour supervision or supervised probation. Like... like reform school? Well, this is your first official arrest, so we can probably get off with a probationary sentence, but... You were caught with that fur piece. I didn't steal it. I told you I was just trying it on to see what it looked like. And it just fell conveniently into your bag. Come on, Julie. If you want me to help you, you have to be honest with me. Honest. Well, Fred, I guess we can go home now. I think that about does it, all right? The Olsons call, I'll fill them in. Thanks. I'll take her on home. And remember, Dr. Horton, that girl must be turned over to the custody of her parents as soon as possible. Now, you've got the forms there. Oh, those are the papers Ben and Annie signed. It's fine. Mike, would it be okay if I have them sign them tonight and bring them in tomorrow morning? That'll be all right. I'll see you later, young lady. I hope not. Take a word of advice from me. You listen to the doctor and the counselor there. Now, you can lip off to me, but a judge won't like it at all. Just remember that. All right, sweetheart. You can go home. I hope your mother didn't wait up. Dad, why don't you take Julie on up to the house? I think I'd better try to track down Addie and her social husband. Where will you look? I'll find them if I have to walk in on every fashionable supper party in Salem. I hope you don't find them. What? Not now, not ever! <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't get the picture out of my mind. <laughs> Very funny. Well, what's so funny? Me, skating up and down the Charles River. I never graduated beyond double runners. <laughs> <laughs> well, neither did I. Oh, anyway, we're in luck. Jim wrote about the two-way they have along the Charles River, so... We don't have to skate to class. We can always take a bus. You mean there's been progress in Boston? Oh, dear heart. Once we arrive there, Boston will really have come of age. I'll get you some matches. <laughs> Thank you. Dizzy from that. Oh. oh, it's nothing, hey. Really. Come on, we were talking about um, talking about Boston, right? Right. <laughs> hey. Hmm? I can see the picture now. Mr. and Mrs. Anthony Merritt have taken up residence in Cambridge, Massachusetts. The city has awaited their arrival with bated breath. The mayor himself is quoted as having said. I love you. The mayor himself is quoted as having said. I love you. <clears throat> there are spies about. Batten down the hatchet and secure the bills. Our houseboat is under surveillance. It's all right, Captain. It's only your father. Aye, but we trust no one. This is war. Down. Down, I say, down. <laughs> oh. Hey, what's the matter, Dad? You okay? Um, <laughs> 
I fooled mercy, you, didn't I? Mercy, huh? mercy, oh, mercy, and mercy. that man, for he is my betrothed. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of that. So how's my favorite daughter to be? And my favorite father-in-law to be? Well, I'm pretty good. Considering my ancient age. Ancient age, my foot. Hey, listen, let me warn you about these guys. Never tangle an airline pilot. These guys keep in shape, huh? Well, Tony, we keep in shape because we keep saying ours. Mm -hmm. Do you realize what time it is? Hey, come on, you put me on. Oh, no, it, uh, it is after midnight. Don't you have class in the morning, Marie? Mm-hmm. And 8 o'clock in the Biomed building all the way across the campus. Want to make something out of it? All right, you too. I just came off a flight, went home, found an absent son, and thought I'd come over and say hello. Hello. Well, am I interrupting something? Oh, no, no, no. I only wanted to spend a few hours with one of the most beautiful, one of the most charming, delectable, delicious creatures in the world. <laughs> but I really don't mind the interruption. Oh, really, I don't. Mm -hmm. Really, I... I was just out for a walk. Oh, he was I... only kidding. <laughs> well, you are the most delightful, delicious. What was the rest of that, Tony? Uh, delectable, most beautiful creature. Hey, in thanks the world. for the rave uh, review. It is getting late. Hey, come on. Now look what you did. No, really, I didn't realize what time it was. Mm hmm. I hope Mom's on the bed. Doc Horton out? Mm -hmm. Oh, he keeps running along on all cylinders, doesn't he? Quite a, quite a man, your dad. No argument there. And you know something? I think your brother, brother Bill's going to be just a good, as good a doctor. Is he coming to the wedding? Unfortunately, no. He's up to his ears in case histories. Yeah, man, that last year of med school is a real backbuster, Dad. This will be a tough year for you, too, Tony. Well, the one difference between Bill and I, at least I'll have my frow to smooth my wrinkled brow. Hey, that's not a bad line, is it, huh? Very poetic, Mr. Yeah. Merritt. Now, come on, Tony. Kiss the lady goodnight. Well, that's one challenge I think I'm up to. You? None other. Come on, Julie. After midnight, how come Julie's... Now, come on inside. I'll explain later. Is Mother awake? No, I don't think so. Good. Come on, Julie. What happened? I'm under arrest. What did you say? I'm under arrest. Let's not get over dramatic, Julie. Well, it's true. Dad, what happened? Go on, Julie. Well, well, it, there was a little problem at Bartlett's department store tonight. It happened this evening. What happened? Go on. Well, I, I was there with Carol and Diane, and this, this creepy detective came along and, and... And found the fur piece in your bag. Yes. Oh, Julie, did you steal it? Did you, Julie? Well, well, I was just trying it on. Maybe it just fell into my bag. Mm-hmm. Marie, were there any phone calls? No. It fell into your bag? You too. I think we'd better have a little chat, Julie. Oh, Dad, it's awfully late. Could she go upstairs and lie down? Is she going to stay here? Mickey's trying to find Ben and Addie. 
There has to be some party someplace. We can't locate them. Julie's going to stay here until we find them. May I go upstairs and lie down? Well, there isn't much we can do until they get here. She seems frightened, Dad. She denies it. Says she's mad. At whom? Everyone, I suppose. Well, maybe I can talk to her. You can try. Will you come down too? No, I'll let Mickey handle Ben and Addie. I'm very tired. I'll talk with Julian and go to bed. Houghton Place about an hour from here. Stop by Houghton Farm. Yes, I know. I've got an appointment at 7. What about you? Don't you have an early morning class? Mm -hmm. But I think I'll wait up. Well, I don't think you'd better. I want to, Dad. Why don't you get some sleep? Stretch out. I'm not tired. Oh, come on. Just lie down for a minute. Come on, I'll cover you up. That's it. It's both pillows. It's still used, two pillows? You remember it. Now, I expect you to be grown up enough. Really grown up enough. To face your parents. But if you insist on denying everything, if you start shouting at your mother and father, if you keep on blaming them for your difficulties... Grandpa, what do you want me to do? Say I'm sorry, beg for forgiveness? Wouldn't that be lovely? Just be quiet, answer their questions, and control your temper. Who guarantees my father controls his? I just want you to control yours. 
Remember that little girl that was lost? And who stayed lost because she was too frightened to use her common sense. And you are frightened. Aren't you, Julie? Oh, Grandpa. 